Hey there, Jono here from Optizen AI. In this video, I just want to essentially answer a question and go through an example that I had from a user the other day. And it's also a question we get asked quite a lot because I think there's been a little bit of confusion and the waters have been muddied a little bit in the last few years. And it's about how to build your site structure for your e-commerce store. And I think it's become a little bit confusing because in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of talk about topical authority and topical relevance and, and building topical maps. And those are, you know, have true legitimacy and is that they're proven, it's proven to work when you build them out correctly. But a lot of that content out there about building sites that way is more aligned with informational sites, affiliate sites, uh, large authority sites, um, where you can build a lot of content around a particular topic and then you might have a lot of content around subtopics within that main topic so the the concept and idea is you cover everything possible in the right way to do with a, a particular main topic so for example if you wanted to start a, a travel site around um, free camping in australia for example it's something that we do a little bit as a family then you need you want to cover that topic in its entirety around australia so that would include everything to do with um, not only just camping spots, but how to get to those camping spots, um, accommodation you might need elsewhere along the way, uh, fuel stops, um, electric vehicle charging, if you've, you've got an electric vehicle, um, food, where you're gonna purchase food if you're gonna be free camping, uh, are you allowed to do recreational activities like um, fishing or are you allowed to have pets? And you break those sections in, into uh, subsections of your website and then you cover those sections in their entirety as well with as many articles or pieces of content that's required in the right way to cover those topics correctly so you can do that with e-commerce stores as well with with blog for example but the starting point needs to be what products you actually sell otherwise there's no point in creating a lot of content um, that, that is not going to lead to sales because that's the point of your e-commerce store so the first point always should be structuring your site for your products and your collections. And then in our case, using OptiZen, our sub collections. And I think it can be, it seems like it can be quite complicated, as I mentioned before, but it's actually quite a simple process. And, and the way we do it is really quite simple and it, and it works. Uh, and it's, you know, without getting, you don't need to get deep into the weeds too much. You can just use simple keyword research tools or, and, and make sure you take into account entities, et cetera, which again, is it's a, it's a complex field on its own, but um, to get started, you really don't need, need to go that deep. You can use uh, topical uh, research or keyword research using these keyword tools to, to get a, a clear understanding of how you're gonna structure your site. If you've got an established site that's maybe a little bit of a mess, it becomes a little bit more difficult because you have to make that decision whether you're going to restructure a site, do all your 301 redirects, et cetera, and then, um, and then build that uh, site structure from scratch while keeping all your products and your site live, et cetera. We've actually got a, a recent case study. It's only a short video I did recently um, about how we did that for a, a WooCommerce store, actually, where we completely stripped out the, um, the, the site structure and rebuilt it. And in the past, there has always been a risk that you'll get a bit of a pullback or, or some problems by doing that. But this particular case study, and it was, it's on a good store, we only saw uh, impact, well, beneficial impact. And it, it happened with after, you know, after about three or four weeks after the site, the redirects were recrawled and revalued, and we didn't see a pullback at all. We only see it uh, heading north, and it's still going that way now. So, and that's, I think, the way it should be if you're going to do redirects in the right way. Um, yes, it's a bot and has to come and read for all and revalue pages, but you, if you're doing it in the right way, you should expect your, your changes to have a, a beneficial impact. The thing in our mind now to do a full site restructure and, and put your redirects in, in the correct place in the right way, uh, and get some benefit pretty quickly. So having said all that, I'll just go through sort of a simple example and we'll, we'll take the example of like a print on demand store, um, that sells clothing, so hoodies, t-shirts, leggings, bikinis, like a lot of print on demand, they might sell some other things like mugs, um, tumblers, they might have pillows and sheets, um, still a print on demand type product, shower curtains, curtains. So they're selling a little bit of a broad range of, of different, um, and, and why, not, why don't we also just throw in their phone cases because that's a, a new 
a, a product where people are selling a lot of uh, print on demand products. And obviously you can see that these uh, products are different types. They're, they're like, if you were generally, you wouldn't, unless you're a real general store, you wouldn't expect to sell phone cases along with hoodies, but it's a print on demand store. A lot of people are doing that. So we need to find a way to actually build a structure that's suitable uh, for these particular products. I made a spelling mistake there. I would only do it around one particular uh, product. So phone ca cases, for example, I'll just keep those. You could do it around clothing and have hoodies, shirts, leggings, because they're all pieces of clothing. Having said that, it doesn't mean this can't work when you have different types of products. Um, certainly if your site's got a bit, of, uh, a bit of age and a bit of power behind it, um, that can work pretty well still. But uh, I'll just go through, because this is a pretty standard uh, POD type store that people have. Um, how we could structure this um, to maximize our organic benefit and traffic coming in from organic search. I'll show you two ways. I'm going to show you uh, show you how we would do it if um, you were just having kind of a broad approach to your collections and sub collections, and then we'll go through. It's although it's still um, reasonably detailed, and then I'll go through how we would structure it if you were wanting to create. Uh, sub collections for things like color and size because people will search for like green hoodies for example or green t-shirts um green one piece bikinis for example and how we can do that and leverage our sub collections with our app to actually uh, adding in our size and color um and still keep it reasonably organized so the first thing i'm going to do is in in the first method the first method we're just going to separate out our product types and then the, add the sub collections for those product types and we'll use our keyword research tool to help us how we should do that so in this case for our clothing we would have men's i'll move that out of the way in a second uh, women Uh, children or kids we'll have a look at some keyword research to tell us that men's women children's um drinkware would be another good one Bedwear, and then shower curtains, curtains. So I've got bedwear. We could either have shower curtains and curtains. I would say we'll call this homeware because we are going a little more broader in this particular example. And then we've got our phone cases. So one point I wanted to make was with thinking about the distinction between an e-commerce store creating these, this structure compared to an affiliate site or an informational store is with, with topical relevance for an affiliate or informational store, uh, informational site, you're going to want to try and cover that topic in its entirety. So you're going to you're going to create as many different articles as you need within your clusters um, to actually cover that topic in its entirety. So that might mean, depending on what you, your research tells you, it might mean you need 500 articles or a thousand articles or 2,000 articles, and you can keep going to you to you complete that. But with uh, with e-commerce store, obviously you're only going to create your structure for the actual products you have, because we've got a collection page, you're going to have products in that collection page. Then we're going to have a sub collection page and we have products associated with that sub collection on that sub collection page. So you're obviously only going to have collections and sub collections for the products you have. It's common sense. Um, but the other side of it is you want to make sure you've got the ability to add on if you bring in a, a new range of products or a new, type of product or type of collection and by using main collections and sub collections you you have that ability 
ready to go and you can just bolt on and keep it nice and organized. If you use this default flat collection structure of Shopify, um, while you can interlink the collections to bet together, it becomes a little messier if you're going to bring in, like you want to separate out uh, a, diff a certain type of product. Um, so like, for example, if you if you wanted to create a collection for um, black hoodies and red hoodies and green hoodies, if you did it on the collection uh, default, you would have to have all, all of these uh, types of hoodies on the collection level um, rather than in a silo or, or a, a cluster themselves. And that if, you, if you're not, if you're new to this, that'll make, make sense in a second. So I'm just going to move these out of the way. So let's say we were looking for, the first one I'm going to create is men's hoodies. So here we've got out, these are sub collections. So hoodies, I don't know why that's not keeping it at 16. Okay. Um, so this would be, so I'll just, just make it clear. So this would be slash collections, slash men's. I mean, you could have this as also as men's clothing if you wanted to, but that would, I would make that determination whether I had the term clothing in my domain, if it was X, Y, Z clothing, print on demand stock shop or whatever, I wouldn't have clothing in my collection because I've already got it in the domain and, and that's already been associated when the bot comes and actually hits that domain. So it knows it's already about clothing. Um, but or even if I didn't, I like to have shorter URLs as short as possible that actually identifies what, what the, the relevance is. So, and then I would associate clothing in the SEO title and the H1 and description, etc. So for me, I like to keep them nice and short. And then this would be, if we create a, a sub collection for hoodies, it would be slash collections slash men's slash hoodies. And, and if you're not, uh, you don't know how our app works uh, with OptiZen in Shopify, we're able to, we create these sub collections using tags, which become, which are then tag pages. We only index or, or have an index tag to the tag pages we like to be indexed by Google and all other tag pages that we don't want indexed have the no index tag. So then we can create, and then these pages, we can edit them. So we can edit the SEO title, the SEO description, the H1 description below product grid, et cetera. We can pretty well optimize these as much as we want um, and only have the tag pages or the, the sub collection pages index that we want. So we can, we can sculpt how we want our, our sub collections along with our core collection. So let's say we're going to do that. I'll just bring on over SEMrush and we wanted to have, we wanted to see what the search volume was for men's hoodies. I mean, we know this is going to be large, so we don't really need to do this, but we know there's a search volume for this and it's going to be reasonably uh, competitive and that that'll tie in with what we might want to look split up our sub collections for size and color later on we just let load up all our keywords so we know men's hoodies is it's highly competitive. It's going to be a lot of search volume for this. It's not wanting to play with me. I'm going to let it load up over there. So while we're doing that, we'll, uh, we'll add in the others. So then the other sub collections we would have, we could have, uh, t-shirts, obviously. Trying to annoy me. I'm not keeping my font size. Okay, I'm just going to copy that. And so now we would have t-shirts. Leggings, probably not for men. So we won't put leggings in there. Bikinis, no. One piece, no. Robes, yep, we could have men's robes. So we're going to add that in. And what I'm basing this example on is we actually sell products that 
So we do sell men's robes, we do sell t-shirts, men's t-shirts, and we do sell men's hoodies. So we're having, we're creating collections for those particular products. Okay, so that's probably it for men's. Okay, I'll just bring on over Sam Rush again because it's now loaded for us. So you can see, you know, hoodies for men, huge volume, men's Nike hoodie, graphic hoodies, men. So that's interesting because we could actually graphic hoodies, men. I don't know. I don't know if that's a brand. It might just mean men's essential hoodie, black. So black hoodies. Okay, that's going to make sense when we do our colours later on in our second uh, version. Men zip up. So. Okay, let's say we will, in this particular, the way we're building it this way, we would have, and we do have zip up hoodies, we could have, oops, have a much luck. We have men's hoodies zip up. But all our men's, hoodie, uh, men's zip up hoodies, we would add this tag hoodies zip up. So now we've got collection slash men's hoodies zip up, or you could call it zip up hoodies. But our, you can see from our search volume, it's got it's got men's zip up hoodies. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll call it zip up hoodies. So we'll change this around. I do like to in our URLs actually use the syntax that you see in the, the tools. Again, they're not 100% accurate, but they give us a pretty good guide to start with. I'm not doing zip up hoodies. So that would be how in this, the way we're building it this at the moment, we would create it this way. So I'm just getting what I'll do. I'll quickly go through and I'm going to do the rest I've got here and add them to these collections. And then we'll look at why we might want to do it uh, in our second example, second version of our site structure. Okay, so I finished uh, building out this and you can see now it's pretty pretty organized, pretty simple. We've got all our men's different types of products in our sub collections. We have our women's in our sub collections, children's in our sub collections. We have our drinkware, so drinkware slash mugs, drinkware slash tumblers. And then we have bedware pillows, bedware sheets. We have homeware, curtains and shower curtains, and phone cases, tough and clear. So we've organized our collections and sub collections pretty pretty simply and they're, they're, they're set up the way that you that would be for a user it makes common sense and also using our, our keyword research tool we know there are there is search volume for all of these sub collections but it's still pretty broad so um, you know for it, it, this is where it becomes a little bit tricky because for if you've only got say a hundred products, and you start splitting them up into all these collections, you're only going to end up with um, a limited number of products in each collection, which, you know, is difficult in itself. So that's where I would, like I said before, if you were just going to, um, if you wanted phone cases, you create a completely separate site and just sell phone cases. So you really become a, your site is only about phone cases. Same for uh, if you were just going to sell hoodies, um, print on demand, there are, and you've got good designs. Um, you can have thousands of products for just the different types of hoodies and same for the t-shirts and then you become an authority on those um, but i just wanted to show the example because i know this is a, how a lot of people have got you know they've got all these products but it, you do need to consider whether it's worth continuing if you want organic traffic to build like this or build a little more specialized so that that's you know pretty pretty simple concept to get your head around so now what we'll do is we'll we'll go back and uh create a new structure for a more detailed store that's selling um, only one particular type of product and then how we can split out sub collections further for those. Okay, so now we'll go through the example and what we're going to assume is this particular store, we just sell hoodies, sell a heap of different types of hoodies. Um, it's unlimited the amount of hoodies we can sell. We're using different POD suppliers or printify or printful or whatever and we've got the ability to create as many different types of hoodies as we want that they have in their inventory so what we're going to do is we're going to create main collections for 
the diff so men's, women's, and children's, and then we'll split up our hoodies into our colors, our sizes even, although we might not want to use sizes if there's not a lot of search volume for them, but it kind of makes sense to do that. And because people obviously will be searching for sizing, we'll check that in, in SEMrush, we'll be searching for sizing for hoodies, and then any other different types of hoodies that we may want within those. So we would have, So this is our second store. I might just make this, a, I'll make this a different color. So it kind of makes sense. Okay, so this would be our second store. Uh, so it would be collections and hoodies. And we have women's hoodies. Also worth checking the research if it's ladies or women's, for example, because depending on a different type of market, there may be greater search volume for ladies compared to to women, and same for children's. Uh, it might be children or kids, for example, and it does depend on the culture or the the actual type of products you're selling. So this one here would be children's. Okay, so we've split our store up into three main collections. That doesn't mean we can create extras later on, but these are the three types of hoodies we'll be selling. So let's say we, we you know, there's a heap of different colors. So for men's hoodies, we sell, we'll, we'll just use three, for example. So we're, we're selling black, green, and red hoodies. So in that case, I'm sure you're way ahead of me, but we would call these black, Oops. Black, green, red. So again, using our tag pages, we've we can create pages that are only for black hoodies. Now, with our uh, it, with the enterprise version of OptiZen, we have what's called. Uh, the, the variant tagger feature and the image thumbnail matcher feature. And what that does is it sends all your, because we're, we're creating a tag page here for black, it, it'll send all your variants for each product and add them as a tag for that product. So if, if you have a color that's black, which is a variant, it'll push it over and add it as a tag. And then we can create these uh, tag pages and that product will automatically be added to that particular tag page. Then what the variant thumbnail image matcher does, it will take the variant image that's black. So the image will, if it's set up correctly from print to file, print for, for example, or whatever other uh, method you're using, it'll take the image that's black and only show that black image of that product on this particular page here. So when a user comes to the, to the page, whether organic search or from paid ads or whatever, all I'll see is all the black versions of that particular product with the, the, that'll be a black hoodie. So the user then sees exactly what they're looking for, a black hoodie. Um, even though that particular, all those particular products may have the, the green and the red variant as well, that they can still choose from if they click on the product. But when they show on the, on the sub collection page, it'll only show the black version. And same you do it for, for all, the other car, all the other colors as well. So then we could do the same for our women, our women's category or collection. Get the idea. Then also for children. That's slow, I'm just doing this in real time, obviously. So we're clear. It'll probably be children's hoodies. Okay. So red children's hoodies, green and black children's hoodies, and all the same for the uh, for the women and for the men. So if we just bring on over SEMrush again, we can see 
black hoodie men. There's really good search volume for that. So it's worth having a tag page for black hoodies men. Now, if we look for, uh, we'll include keywords red men's hoodies, and we'll see if there's any search volume for that. Okay, so we can see red hoodie men, there's some good search running for that. And of course, there's going to be all the other colors as well. So if we're selling those colors, it makes sense to have them as our tag pages here as well. Now, there might be other versions. So for example, uh, men's red hoodie, I'm just looking over here, what else we've got that we might, might sell. Um, graphic hoodie. Red Sox men's hoodie. Let's bring it back here so everyone can see it. Designer. Oh, yeah, okay. So the zip up one, that would obviously make sense. So then we would have our um, men's, we have our zip up hoodie as well. So it's fine to have, have it uh, in the same, at the same level as our colors because all these pages are going to, um, the search volume for them and they're all within the men's hoodies collection now on some you know like on a, a custom built e-com store they might even split it out split this out further and have collections men's hoodies zip up and then the color slash color but shopify doesn't allow us to do that certainly not yet so this is kind of the deepest level we can go while keeping things organized so you can see if there's if you've got lots of products and, and how you can you can build categories quite a lot of different categories for different types of products, especially if there's search volume that you can pick up those and they become a little bit longer tail and you can, you can give your site the potential and the opportunity to actually pick up organic search from those. Certainly because these tag pages and these sub collection pages, we can rank them because they, they can be indexed and they're unique, have unique content, content um, for the search engines. And I've also added in Polo because that's uh, obviously another type of hoodie as well that you might sell on Printify or Printful. So, you can, and again, you just expand them out to, if you sell them for children, if you sell them for women, you add them in there as well. That's essentially it, but I just wanted to sort of emphasize that even though this took a you know a little bit of work to go through and, and we had looked at some of our keyword research tools and we had to have it, you know, think a little bit how it should be done depending on what products we have. The concept is actually pretty simple and there's no need to get bogged down into the weeds with complexity um, when you, if you just step back and look at it from a common sense point of view, then you take into account what products you have, look at some of the search volume and the demand for the products out there, and then build your structure around it. And then if you do it like this, then you obviously you can see when we've got our main collection and our sub collection, you can bolt on easily as you bring more products in, um, that rather than creating a mess with your, your structure, that's not only going to be a mess for users, but it's also going to be a mess for the search engines, which they don't want to see that these days. So it makes it very difficult, certainly competitive markets to do well when you have um, a messy structure that doesn't make sense to anybody. Okay, I hope all that makes sense. So also just on the pro version of OptiZen, you can create tag pages uniquely uh, and build your structures as you need them and then um, create, add that content in uniquely for your tag pages and create true sub collections. For the variant tag and variant image thumbnail matcher, you need the enterprise version for that to work. And um, we need to do custom installs for that too. So if you install the app, um, you just send us a, a message and we get that done for you. Okay, thanks. Talk to you next time.